This video is about chapter 7, and in this chapter we will introduce bivariate data and display bivariate data using scatter plots. We will also talk about how to describe scatter plots by talking about the direction, form, strength, unusual features, and something called correlation. First, um, let's discuss the types of data. So far in this um, class, we've discussed mostly univariate data, meaning um, there's only one quantitative or categorical variable. Okay, we've talked a lot about proportions, meaning success failure, how to do confidence intervals and hypothesis tests with proportions. We've also talked about amounts, which we usually um, describe using means, and talked about confidence intervals and hypothesis tests about means. Okay, we are now switching gears and talking about bivariate data, data that has two quantitative variables. And just you know, at the very very end of the school year, uh, we'll talk about categorical data and doing hypothesis tests with categorical data. That's later on, much later on in the year. Okay, so scatter plots. Um, you have two quantitative variables. Um, the variable that will go on the x-axis we call as the explanatory variable. And I think about the x in explanatory to remind me that it's on the x-axis. Okay, and then the response variable, how what's responded to that, um, it goes on the y-axis. Okay, and this is a scatter plot. Um, it's also good to have, you know, units there and also a heading or you know a label of what this um, scatter plot is describing. Okay, so how to describe scatter plots? Um, the direction, form, strength, and unusual features. We'll talk about each one of these individually. So first, um, the direction, okay? Um, it won't surprise you that we call a positive, if it goes reading from left to right, it goes up, it has a positive slope, okay? A negative scatter plot, reading from left to right, it goes down, has a negative slope, okay? It's also positive, possible to have no association, meaning it's, there's no pattern to it, or it's a horizontal slope. Next, the form. Is it straight or is it curved? Okay, that's a very important um, point for us. Is a, lot, a lot of the tools that we will build up for um, scatter plots all depend on it being a straight pattern. Okay, so if it's curved, we may need to straighten it, and that's coming much later in this unit in Chapter 10. Next, the strength. Okay, is it a strong relationship or is it kind of a moderate strong or moderate weak or is it a weak scatter plot? Okay, um, there is a numerical measure for strength that I'll, we'll discuss later on in this video. But we talk about if it, is it a strong or a moderate or a weak um, relationship. The last thing is unusual features, okay? It's kind of our catch-all for something else that stands out about the graph, okay? One very common thing to discuss are outliers. Are there any outliers in the data, okay? Or do there seem to be any clusters or subgroups um, that are kind of making up this scatter plot that we may need to discuss, okay? Anything else that kind of stands out to you about the graph, you can also discuss that as you describe the scatter plot. To wrap up our discussion about how to describe scatter plots, um, I want to give you a couple of examples. Okay, again, we're looking at the direction, form, strength, and unusual features. In number one, the first thing I see is that there's no association. Okay, so there also isn't an idea about a linear or curve because there's no association. Um, it's weak, and I don't see any unusual features. Okay, in number two. Um, it, it's a positive, it's linear association. I would consider it strong, and there's no unusual features. In number three, um, it's positive, it's going up. It is curved. You see, I don't know if you see a slight bend to the data. However, it is, I would say, a strong association. It's a very clear curve. I don't see any unusual features. Okay, and finally, number four, it is negative. It's linear, because it looks like it's going, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. This one looks like it could be a straight line, or it could, there could be a slight curve to it. 
um, it's hard to tell because there's so few, there's not a lot of points there. Um, when in doubt, I will say it's linear. Um, I would call it moderate, moderately strong, and I will say there might be a slight curve. Okay, and so that's describing scatter plots: direction, form, strength, and any unusual features. Okay, I mentioned earlier that there is a way to measure um, with a number how strong a linear relationship is. Okay. So a couple things to discuss before we get into that idea is that we don't want it to depend on the scale of the variables or how they're displayed. Okay, um, These four graphs all display the exact same data, even though this one looks like it's not as strong and maybe this one looks stronger for some reason. Okay, um, We don't want it to depend on the scales because there are some different scales here. And it also should not depend on, you know, the scale of the graph that we've displayed. So the first thing we do is we standardize using z-scores both variables. So we actually plot, you know, the, the x, you know, the, um, sorry, the z-score for the x variable and the z-score for the y variable, and we plot those effect from the scale. Okay. The next thing we do is we multiply the z sub x and the z sub y, the z scores for the x each, x and y coordinate together, and we add those up for each point. Okay. Um, and then to you know we we then divide by n minus one, so we don't um, it's not affected by how many points there are in our graph. Okay. This equation gives us what's called the correlation coefficient. Okay. It's a measure of the linear relationship between two variables. Okay. Now, to give you an idea of what um, this correlation is and how to, um, and what numbers it gives you, um, there is an applet online that I found that I want to go over with you. Okay. Here it is. So up here you have the number of points. If you want to actually to have um, more like 500 points, it'll give us that graph. We want to have only about 80 points. Um, it'll be there, so I'll keep somewhere around 200 because that's I think gives you a nice idea what the graph looks like. Okay, this has a correlation coefficient of 0.62. Okay, if I pull it up even higher, you'll notice that it looks even more linear. It's a stronger correlation as you get closer to one. Okay, and a correlation of exactly one will be an exact straight line. Okay, so if you have numbers that are very close to one, it's a very strong relationship, and it's positive. Okay. As we get lower, you'll notice that it gets less strong, and there it kind of it's looking kind of positive, but it is kind of looking more like a jumble of numbers. And we're only at 0.5. They get lower and lower, 0.32. I guess it could be kind of positive, but it's just a you know a random scattering of points at this point. And if you get to zero, it is just there's no it can't be positive or negative. It's just a random scattering of points. Okay. As we go negative, it begins to have a little bit of, it's, it's looking like it's tending towards being negative, but still a random scattering of points. Okay. We get to negative 0.5, it is kind of going down, but it is a random scattering of points. As we get further and further negative, closer to negative 1, it tends to be a stronger and stronger relationship until at negative 1, it is a perfect straight line going down. Okay. So the correlation is strongest when it's closest to one or negative one um, and it is there's a very very weak associations around zero okay so before you can find the correlation um, you do need to check some conditions as we do in this class we check conditions before we do any kind of process Okay. The first is the quantitative variable condition. Both variables must be quantitative for you to look at a correlation. Okay. The second thing is the straight enough condition. Okay. We can calculate the correlation for um, straight scatter plots or curved scatter plots, but don't forget that the correlation is the measure of the linear strength. Okay. So if it's curved, you can still calculate the correlation, but it may not be as meaningful to you because it's curved. So make sure that the scatter plot is straight before you find the correlation. Okay, the outlier condition. Outliers distort the correlation dramatically. Okay, when there's an outlier, it's a good idea to report the correlation with and without the outlier. Let me show you an example of how an outlier affects the correlation. 
back on this applet, um, I can actually move some of the points. So here is, um, I'll say, correlation of 0.9, which is a pretty good, um, a pretty strong correlation. If I take one of these points and move it out here to be an outlier, it changes the correlation down to 0.8, okay, which is a pretty dramatic um, effect. If I take another one and move it over here, it drops it down to 0.7, okay? So moving even a few points will dramatically affect, even though the overall trend is a pretty strong trend, there are a couple of outliers that will affect um, the the correlation, okay? So it's strongly affected by outlier. So if there's an outlier, um, you should report the correlation with and without that outlier. Okay, next, some correlation properties. Okay, all of these are important. The one that's in blue tends to show up quite a bit on AP exam, so be aware of that one. But the sign of the correlation gives the direction of the association. If the correlation is positive, that means that there's a roughly positive slope. Okay, if the correlation is negative, it's a negative slope. Okay, correlation is always between negative one and positive one, and the closer they are to negative one and positive one, the stronger the correlation. And correlations that are close to zero are weak. Second, sorry, third, the correlation treats X and Y symmetrically. The correlation of X with Y is the same as the correlation of Y with X. That one shows up quite a bit on AP exam, so be aware of that one. Okay. Correlation has no units, and the correlation is not affected by changes in the center or scale of either variable. That one also shows up, I guess, on AP exams as well, um, that if you change the units to one of them, how will that change the correlation? And the answer is it doesn't. Okay. The last thing to know, um, I've said this before, but correlation is very sensitive to outliers. So this video is about bivariate data, data with two variables, it was about scatter plots and how to describe scatter plots, talking about the direction, form, strength, and unusual features, and finally, a measure for the strength of the linear association between two quantitative variables called correlation. Thank you for watching.